Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills, a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. This is episode 18, your second project. If you've been following along, you now have all the skills you need to know to make this cool little guy. I call it the magic tube. It's a place that you can store stuff and it has no obvious way to open it whatsoever. It's a really cool trick that you can only do with machining and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Okay, so here's our magic tube. As you can see, there's no visible sign of how to open it. But here's the trick. The cap just unscrews like that and the seam, when it's fully closed, is virtually invisible. And the tighter you close it, the better that uh, seam is hidden, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat trick. So I'm going to show you how we do this. So I'm going to make this tube out of some scrap that I have. And uh, this scrap has kind of a crazy end on it left over from another project. So I'm just going to start by angling my tool post over to face that off. Now anytime there's kind of a crazy end on something like this, I'm, I'm never sure whether it's easier to face it off or part it off. Uh, in this case, I decided to face it all the way down, but uh, yeah, it's debatable which was quicker. Yeah, it was probably quicker to part it off. Yeah, okay, it was definitely quicker to part this off. Now note that I'm not deburring most of these cuts. That's going to be important later. Now I'm going to set up to drill the center hole for tail support. And here's a little trick I like when uh, putting a small drill in the uh, Jacob's Chuck. Start with the jaws uh, closed and then open them gradually. And that prevents accidentally getting the small drill caught between two of the jaws and thus having it off center. Uh, this is easy to catch on the drill press because, of course, you see it wobble when the, when the drill starts, but it can be harder to detect on the lathe because, of course, the drill is stationary. Now I'm going to pull the stock out to the length that I need, and it's important to pull it out a couple of inches longer than you want the final tube to be, and uh, that will make more sense later on. But we'll get the tail stock in there and lock it down and touch off, and now we can do a cleanup pass. A little cutting oil, always a good idea. Now the nice thing about this project is that there are really no critical dimensions on here. You can make all of this stuff any size you want. So I just did a cleanup pass and I'm going to see where we're at. And we're at 8.05, so I'm going to take it down to 700 because the hole down the middle is going to be about half an inch and that will give me a hundred thou wall thickness all the way around and uh, that's a good healthy wall thickness because we're going to need that later so whatever dimensions you end up choosing try to end up with uh, at least say an 80 to 100 thou wall thickness and then to get to that 700 thou I need 15 thou so I'll dial that in on the cross slide and do a finishing pass with a slower feed and higher speed for a nicer finish Okay, that's looking good so far. Now I can part this guy off. Now this scrap here that I chose is a little bit short. I would actually recommend leaving more uh, excess stock than I ended up doing, but uh, we can make this work. And I'm actually going to pause the parting operation halfway through and go in there and deburr that back edge. And then come back and finish the parting. And Yahtzee. Okay, we're going to put the tube on hold for a moment, and we're going to go and make the cap. So uh, I'm going to use the little stub that I had left over from my stock, but uh, you can use any piece that you have lying around. So I'm going to face off that end, and I didn't face it all the way down because I know that the diameter that I'm going to end up with is smaller than that shoulder that is remaining. So now we can just touch off and clean up the surface once again. And I'm just bringing this down to 
roughly the same diameter as the tube was. Uh, it can be a little larger than the tube, but make sure it isn't smaller, and you'll see why in a moment. Now we're going to set up to cut the shoulder for our threads, and here's an easy way to get a precise shoulder depth. Just do a light facing pass, and then we know that the tool bit is exactly on the end of the part, and then you can put a dial indicator on the carriage, preload it, and zero it, and now I'm going to count 500 thou, which is the depth that I want, so I'm counting five turns on that indicator, and then I can just pull the indicator back off the carriage, and then give it another light preload, zero it again, and then on each pass now I know that that zero mark is going to be the bottom of my shoulder. And then I go ahead and turn down that shoulder. So I'm turning it down to a few thou under half inch, the major diameter of our thread, and uh, that's because I'm going to be cutting this with a die, so I want a little extra uh, cushion there. Dies cut much easier if the uh, stock is a little bit less than their nominal diameter. I'm going to pause here for a moment and uh, point out that having a proper facing technique on the shoulder on the underside of the cap is really important because the cap and the tube have to be, have to mate very well for this trick to work. And uh, so either, uh, you know, use the technique that I showed in my turning to a shoulder video, or as I'm doing here, if you know that your tool post is very square and your tool bit is ground very square, you can actually, since it's a short shoulder, just use the edge of the tool bit as kind of a form tool as I'm doing here. And uh, that will also give you uh, a very good square shoulder. And uh, to help get the die started, I'm going to put my chamfering tool in here next and give that guy a little bevel. Chamfering tools are immensely satisfying. Okay, that's looking good. So now I can get my tailstock die holder in action here. And I'm cutting these threads half inch 20 for no particular reason other than I thought half inch would be a nice inside diameter for the tube. And uh, a fine thread does work better for this trick than a coarse thread. So whatever diameter you choose, I recommend choosing a fairly fine pitch in that diameter. And that's looking good. And then we'll just bevel the end of that thread to make it look nice. And this bevel also makes it a lot easier to start the cap in the tube when you go to install it. And now we can part this guy off. Now note that there's still a shoulder left above the thread, but we're going to deal with that here in a minute. And yeah, so now we're going back to the tube and I'm setting up to drill the body of the tube. And uh, so I'm measuring the depth here just by marking the end of the drill. And uh, the depth here isn't super critical. Just make sure that you go less than the excess that you left on the body of the tube when we made it, because we need enough space to hold that guy in the chuck and also part it off when we're done. Here's a little trick for quickly clearing your chips when you're drilling deep. Just unlock the tailstock, slide the whole thing out without touching the quill. That'll clear your chips and then slide it right back in, lock it again, and resume drilling with your quill and you don't lose your place on the quill markings. I'm starting with a quarter inch here and uh, I'll go up in one more stage. Now we go in with the tapping drill size for a 50% engagement thread on half inch 20, which is 15 30 seconds. And that's running a little fast. Let's slow that down. That's better. Okay, so with our speed correct for the diameter of the drill, it's cutting very well. And I go all the way into my mark. Looking good. Okay, now we're ready to tap that hole. Now I'm going to use the same trick for marking the length on my tap. Again, the dimensions here are not critical, so a Sharpie mark is enough precision. And uh, we're just going to tap that in. As long as we have more threads than we had on the cap, then uh, we are good to go. So we really don't need very much. Okay, now we'll do a quick test fit. It threads in very nicely, but of course it doesn't go in all the way because of that shoulder that I mentioned. So there's lots of ways to deal with this. I'm just going to go in with a chamfering tool 
and put a little chamfer on the inside of this uh, tube here, as you see. But you can also counter bore it, or you can use the end of a large drill to get a bit of a chamfer in there. Or you can also do an undercut on the thread with a parting or a grooving tool. But uh, I'm just showing a different technique here. And with that on there, it now closes down there very nicely. You can still just see that line, and that's what we want. Okay, so now we're gonna take advantage of the setup here to face off the end of the cap. Now this works because this is a right-hand thread and the lathe is spinning counterclockwise, and so the thread will actually just tighten against the tool pressure. However, that only works if you are careful not to cross over the center line of the part. If you do that, well, this happens. But don't panic, we can just go back in and face off that little mistake and be a little more careful this time. Perfect. And we can also deburr that edge while we're here. Okay, square up the tool post again. And so now I'm gonna pull the tube all the way out and I need to have the full fi finished tube clear of the chuck. And I'm gonna dial it in with the four jaw chuck. And uh, I'm using a 3D printed tool post indicator holder here, which uh, this is an idea I got from Mr. Pete. And there's a link to that uh, file in the show notes if you wanna print this guy out yourself. And now, even though we've dialed in the base of the part, because we're only holding it by the very end, it's got some wobble in it still at the far end. And so what we can do is uh, put a, uh, a ball bearing on the tool post and just come in here and just kind of cozy up to it. And once the ball bearing is in full contact and both parts are spinning, it will self-align. And you can get the part aligned to, you know, within five thousandths, uh, total indicated route this way. And that's all we need because next we're going to turn down the outer diameter of the whole assembly. And you might think it's madness to turn down something with this much stick out, but we're doing extremely light passes here, no more than two or three thousandths depth of cut. And we can get away with that. Now, watch what happens as we turn down that surface. That line between the body and the cap gets fainter and fainter. Now you might have to do five or six or even more passes to get this to work. Uh, but just keep doing like two, three thou passes, very light passes, and eventually the effect will happen and that line will disappear. Now, if you're having trouble getting this trick to work, try also doing a light facing pass on the end of your tube once again, just to make sure that it's seating perfectly on that cap. Look at that. No trace of that seam whatsoever. In fact, it's hard to tell actually even where it is. Now it'll be really tight the first time because it's had all that cutting pressure on it. But once you loosen it up, now you can unscrew it and there's that seam like magic. Hence the name, Magic Tube. It's a really cool effect. Okay, now we can part this guy off. And Yahtzee. So here's that final tube once again, and uh, it's pretty easy to achieve this effect. It's a lot of fun, and it's something that uh, really you can only do with machining. So what should we store in this tube? Well, I'm opting to store my spare cotton swab ends in there. You know, the indexable ear tooling is more expensive up front, but uh, I find in the long run it really pays for itself. So there you have it. This is a really easy beginner lathe project, and I think it makes a really great, fun second project after the ring that we made last time. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and you'll try this project on your new lathe. And thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time.